Um, I could just talk about the piece, like what I like about like how it sounds and everything, but there's no better thing than to hear the story from the composer himself. So please welcome Jim Sasson. Before I say anything about uh, the piece you're about to hear, I really would like to express how much I've enjoyed, how much uh, it, it's moved me that Nalt is playing tonight, and I think there's just such an exquisite sound and touch that he has. It's been absolutely extraordinary. So I just wanted to say thank you in advance for the first half. I'll tell you a little bit about this piece. Um, it's called Coolish Zion, which is uh, a small phrase from a book, uh, a series of books called Dune. Uh, the movie came out recently last year. Um, these are books that have had a huge impact on me. I've read them about, there's six books, I've read them about two dozen times, all of them during my life, and I'm reading them again now. Um, and uh, the phrase Coolish Zion, it's, it's an answer to a kind of challenge, which is um, may there be good times, and the answer Coolish Zion is Maybe this is as good as it gets. So that's where that phrase comes from. Um, and it was a commission from a friend of mine in America, Michael Burrett, who's a bit of a legend amongst percussionists in the world. He's a great teacher, has produced many incredible students that have gone on to big careers, and is an amazing performer himself and a great composer as well. And Michael and I have connected over the years, and he's commissioned a few pieces. And he asked me for a concerto. And he said, but I don't want, I don't want to deal with orchestras. So can you write me a concerto using this thing that I've been doing for quite a while, which is to use a backing ta tape or a backing track where um, anything that you can imagine might happen on it and there is a soloist playing in sync with that thing. So that's been a big part of my journey. And he said, can you write me a concerto that is for a soloist, a percussion quartet and a tape? And uh, that was, for me that was a great opportunity and I wrote this piece and I was very happy with it. And then Michael said, is there any chance you could maybe put that quartet on the tape as well? So I have two versions, you know, one I can play by myself. And that's what Nath is playing tonight, which is the solo version. Um, and uh, it's done really well. Michael's premiered it. It was actually a, a consortium commission, which means a group of people commissioned the work and it has a whole lot of premieres. It's on YouTube. And I'm really pleased with how it's gone. Um, so what I'm going to do is just tell you a little bit about the piece itself. There are three parts. They have three, the movements have titles. And the first title, which is Her Alchemy, you'll hear sounds on the tape that I found incredibly moving while I was writing the piece. And they're sounds of a uh, woman uh, singing mostly, but uh, transformed and processed, like not entirely natural recordings. Um, and these were parts of libraries that I, I owned or things that I found and I used them and they generated really what the, the soloist was doing and it became what it becomes and you'll, you'll hear that. Um, the second uh, movement, which is a depiction of what it might be like to busk in London in the future, it's really a, a, a kind of uh, outcome of, for the past almost half a century, having read pretty much all of the really good science fiction that's been written. Uh, and I realise my, my imagination has spent so much time in imaginary futures, in the reading of all of those books, that a huge part of my past has been spent in imaginary futures. And so what I actually live with is a kind of nostalgia for the future, because I've spent so much time in the future in my past. And so in this movement, you kind of have that feeling and the idea I had, I had this sort of idea in my head in Trafalgar Square in front of the gallery there in London, um, somebody busking, because I have a lot of ex-students that have gone exactly there and busked over the years, um, and I've gone to see them do their thing. And I just had this idea in the future of what would that be like? What would the music be like busking 100 years from now? And so just imagining these things, and then imagining a robot from that time just walking past, maybe delivering a pizza somewhere, and um, stopping and interacting with the musician making it. So you'll hear all of that in that movement. And then the last movement, uh, which is Trimetrical Hub, which is, I was very happy to find it. It's a great anagram of Michael Burrett's piece. And he didn't know that for years. He didn't know that that title was his name. Um, it has two things that I'd just like to describe. It has two rhythms in it. The first one, I think it's in the program. It's a 17-8 Macedonian dance, and it's four plus six plus seven. 
The four is divided into two twos, the six is divided into two threes, and the seven is two twos and a three, right? So it's, I'll try and do this. That's the rhythm, right? Or as my friends in the Greek band that I used to play with would count, and they would go, okay, John, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go. And so there was, I was never in on time with those guys. So that, that, that was the first one. And then what happens at the end? There's a kind of transformative center in the middle of that movement. And it comes out of it, sort of lands. And it's in a six eight, which is, it'll feel like three, a three. Now the thing about that six eight, if I can just explain it, I bought a CD in Paris. It had nothing on the cover, no information. It just had an amazing image of an Arabic instrument. And I bought it and I listened to it and I fell in love with it deeply. There was no information, artist, album, title of track, nothing. But I fell so deeply in love with this music and I tried transcribing it, which is a big thing for me to learn by transcribing. And I tried four years to transcribe one of these tracks and could not do it and couldn't understand why. Because I've got, I've got to the point where I can kind of transcribe anything, but not this. And then one day, and it was only when I was writing this piece, I tried one more time, and I just listened in. And the drummer is playing something, it feels like it's in six. But there's, there's something where if you, if you listen half focused, you start counting with the music, and I go, that's in a different place. I'm counting in a different place, what's happened? And then I'll listen in again, and it'll land somewhere else. And I realize that there's one instrument in the drum kit, it's a tambourine on a stand. And the drummer is doing a million things, but they're doing this as well in the tambourine. And it's one sixteenth note, like one semiquaver, to the left of everything else. And if you allow that to enter into your ear, it completely shifts how you hear everything else that's going on. And I finally figured it out, and I transcribed it, and I incorporated it into the last part <laughs> of this movement, so you'll get to hear it. Okay, so I think that's more than enough. For this. I hope you enjoy the piece. It's fantastic that it's getting played here, because so much of the percussion music I've written in the last five or ten years, and most of it, has been percussion music, it hasn't been played in New Zealand. It's been played outside in other places. So this is a great honour for me. So thank you very much, Norman.